Hello, this is Dr. Tony Clark with learninganesthesia.com, and today we're going to talk about preoperative EKG evaluation. These recommendations are, are a combination of the 2014 American Heart Association guidelines and from an article written by Freely et al. in 2013. So the first thing you need to ask is what type of surgery they are having and if it is low risk, intermediate risk, or high risk. Low risk surgery is going to be things like ambulatory surgery, breast, endoscopic, anything superficial, or cataract surgery. If this is a low risk surgery, no EKG is indicated. I'm gonna put a little asterisk here though. And we'll talk about why a little bit later. Next, if you have an intermediate surgery, you should review the patient's revised cardiac risk index and other things of the patient's history. Things important in the patient's history are history of coronary artery disease, history of peripheral arterial disease, history of cerebral vascular disease, a history of structural heart disease, and any history of arrhythmia. The revised cardiac risk index we talked about in our pre-op cardiac clearance lecture. The first three things have to do with the patient's history. History of ischemic heart disease. A history of heart failure. A history of cerebral vascular disease. The next three things have to do with how the patient presents on the day of surgery. Diabetes requiring insulin. Chronic kidney disease, the creatinine greater than or equal to two. And type of surgery, if it is high risk, meaning is it vascular intraperitoneal or intrathoracic. If going over the patient's history and revised cardiac, cardiac risk index, the answer greater than or equal to one of these questions with an intermediate surgery, then they should get a pre-op EKG. If going over the revised cardiac risk index and the patient's history, and they don't meet any of these within intermediate risk surgery, no EKG is required. If the patient has high risk surgery, no matter what, get a pre-op EKG. What is considered intermediate and high risk surgery? We already talked about what's considered low risk surgery. Intermediate risk surgery,
in the abdominal. Intrathoracic. Carotid. Head or neck surgery. Ortho. In prostate. High risk surgery includes aortic, major vascular, and peripheral vascular. So, going over this. Does my patient need a pre-op EKG? If they have low-risk surgery, that being ambulatory surgery, breast surgery, endoscopic, superficial, or cataract surgery, no EKG is indicated. If the patient is having intermediate risk surgery, that is intra-abdominal, intrathoracic, carotid, head and neck, ortho, or prostate surgery, and the patient does not meet any of the revised cardiac risk index or history that we talked about, then no EKG is indicated. If they meet at least one of these criteria, then an EKG is indicated. If the patient is having high-risk surgery, aortic, major vascular, or peripheral vascular, a pre-op EKG is indicated. I put an asterisk on no EKG. If you look at the data, no EKG is indicated. However, if there is a reason you want an EKG in this patient, you're not going to be faulted to get one. Every once in a while during these low-risk surgeries, a patient has a weird arrhythmia or ST changes during the procedure, and it is nice to have a pre-op EKG. So even if they don't meet this criteria, no one's going to fault you to get an EKG, but these are the guidelines which the American Heart Association recommends and in this article from 2013. Hope this helps.